is going on everyone and welcome back to another pay-per-view predictions video from the guys over here at the on the mark wrestling podcast i am the host of the show kyle gagliardi and the nxt champion alongside my co-host jim tucker or as i like to call him Ducky! what's going on kyle life is good look what you found yes we are back <laughs> yes. we are back we are back we i are. got my belt back clean sweep yeah. Perfect show, got everything right, life is good. Yeah, so we were going to review Clash of Champions on the podcast, but things changed. The Cardinals were playing, they play again in a couple hours, so after you watch this video, you'll probably know what already happens to the fate of my favorite so team. So he's either really happy as you watch this video, or, or he's kind of bummed. Yeah, I just, got a little can, money on the line too? I do, yeah, but uh, we put no money on the line here, but we do put this. We put the straps. Right here yes. on the line. It's only between us two, so the NXT is a little different than the main roster. But Tuck, like you said, you went undefeated at Clash of Champions. I yes. don't think that's ever been done for our main roster no, predictions. No, I was close with Survivor Series. I missed one or two um, back in November. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That's crazy to think that's back in November. That was like a year ago now. Like, we're already in uh, October. That is crazy. We attended Survivor Series. We attended War Games. Yes. And, awesome, uh, awesome weekend. I ended up doing five shows in six days. I can't believe you uh, did that still. That's yeah. in hindsight. Now I'll probably cut out one or two, but but honestly, right now we would take any shows. I would go to all of them right now. Yeah, we just went to a Warrior Wrestling show and we're going to a Black Label Pro show in our hometown of Crown Point. Yeah, uh, tomorrow evening. So we'll see how that is. EC3 is going to be there. Brian Myers. I know I'm missing some... Brazo, yep. Kylie Ray, Alex Shelley. Uh, Not your first Black Label show. No, this will be my second. They do a good job. So. I'm looking forward to that, definitely. But I'm also looking forward to NXT TakeOver 31, which is happening this Sunday, not Saturday. But don't forget, this video is presented by the Overtime Sports Network. Mm -hmm. You can now find the new domain at otsportsnetwork.wixsite.com slash OTSN. And where can you find OTSN on Twitter and Instagram? The easiest way to get to that URL is to follow us on Twitter yep. at underscore OTSN. You can click it in the bio. It's often tweeted out. Yeah. Um, new website, new layout, check us out. Um, and if you're interested in joining the team, we're yeah. always looking for bloggers, especially mm -hmm. um, on, on all kinds of sports topics. So if you if you have a niche or you want to try, we're here. We've been looking for some wrestling bloggers, too. That's yeah. something I feel like the network needs. So if you like to write and you love wrestling, which you probably do if you're watching this video, come join us. Just shoot us a DM uh, at underscore OTSN is where you can do that. But I'm looking to defend this title, and we're going to start things off here with the first match, Kushida versus the Velveteen Dream. This match and this feud has kind of been built up over for a month now. I mean, Kushida's costed Velveteen and vice versa and whatnot, but here we are in a regular match. I'm assuming it will kick off this show. Where are you leaning here in this matchup? Uh, you're going first. Oh, you're going I first. I forgot. <laughs> that. I, I go first because I'm the champion. That's how things go around here. Uh, this one's tough. I, I think it can go either way, but I also believe that Velveteen Dream has had plenty of big wins mm -hmm. in his tenure in NXT. I don't think he really needs this more than Kushida, and that's the way I'm going to look at it, and that's the way I'm going to predict here. I'm going to go with Kushida. Ever since they signed him about a year ago, and maybe a little over a year now, he really hasn't accomplished anything. There's not that significant win that you can point yeah. out and say that is the big win for Kushida to get him over the hump. I think this beating a guy like the Velveteen Dream, a guy that's been in the NXT title pitcher, won the North American title, it would be a big win for Kushida. So I'm going with him. I am also going with Kushida. And along with your points, which are many of mine, I, I, I just don't think that WWE is going to thrust Dream into another big program, especially with... Uh, whether they like it or not, whether he's innocent or not, it's just the vibe around Velve Velveteen Dream at this point uh, yeah. is not great. So uh, Kushida, I do. Th I think it'll be a good match. Kushida's going to come out with a win, in my opinion, as well. Um, and that gives him a little bit of star power behind uh, his resume as well. I was kind of hoping you were going to go with Velveteen there. I don't yeah. know why I thought you were, but nope. definitely not. Could you imagine, too, though, if he were to win? Because we already see a bunch of fire Velveteen Dream hashtags yeah. and whatnot. If he wins, 
the internet wrestling community is not going to be happy. Right. So we're both going with Kushida, and that's a big reason why the next match up here that we have is the NXT Women's Championship match between the champion Io Shirai and Candice LeRae, the number one contender who won that battle royal on NXT a couple weeks ago. Tucky, you get to go first here. I get to go first, and I'm coming right out of the gates. I'm saying Io retains. Um, I... I don't feel at this moment that Candice needs the title for her current situation. I still think she's developing into a heel. And I don't think she has the star power to overtake Io Shirai at the top. And I also think Io Shirai is just dominant. Yeah. I, think they're, I think they're kind of working Io to be the dominant uh, women's champion to thrust her to the main roster and make her kind of instantly relevant. Yeah. I think. Maybe. But that's where I'm leaning. What about you? I First off, I want to say EO's reign in general right now has kind of been slightly lackluster, I think. It's been okay. Whether that has to do with not having fans in attendance and whatnot and being able to give her that support because she is a really good baby face and a badass one at that. I've flip-flopped multiple times on this match because I could definitely see Candice LeRae winning here. But I think if Candace is going to win, I would believe that Johnny would win as well. I think they're trying to become this power couple here in NXT. And if one person has the belt and the other one doesn't, it really doesn't make much sense. So with that thinking, what I think is going to happen in the North American title match, and it's going to be interesting to see where these you know matches line up on the sure. card, because mm-hmm. that might have an effect on it as well. But I think I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to go with Io Shirai here. Leo agrees with me in the background. He's also Leo going with for Io. Yeah, yes. that makes 100% sense right there. So, yeah, I'm going with Io Shirai. Not too confident on it, but I think it'll be a really good match. Yeah. Looking forward to it, but yeah. we'll see what happens there. The next matchup, another one that could be really good, it could be even the show stealer here, is the Cruiserweight Championship between Santos Escobar, the champion, and Isaiah Swerve, Swerve. Scott. Scott. One of our biggest guys, one of the biggest listeners, I would say, of the podcast. Yeah. We know he interacts with us all the time on Twitter. And we at, appreciate it, Swerve. At Pot on the Mark is yes. where you can find us there. This means I'm going first, right? Correct. First off, I want to say, uh, did you watch NXT this week? I did not. Okay, they have a little backstage interview segment where they're, you know, they're all in their own rooms and whatnot, and they were going back and forth. They had a really good back and forth that kind of hyped me up for this match, and I think. We saw a little bit of intensity from Swerve, and would, which we really haven't got the chance to see yet. Mm-hmm. Especially, you know, him as a babyface and whatnot. But I think one title has to change hands at this pay-per-view. I don't feel strongly about the other matches having a title change. And I don't think it hurts Santos Escobar to lose here. Mm-hmm. Granted, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, his friends, his buddies, the two others that I n- don't know off the top of my head. But yeah. they might get involved in this matchup. But I think they might... Pun intended, throw a swerve here. Yeah. Give the belt to Scott. And I don't think it's going to be a long reign by any means because I think Santos Escobar needs to, you know, do more as a heel and getting that title back eventually, maybe in a couple weeks and whatnot on NXT would be good for him. But for some reason, and maybe it's because I predicted on the podcast at the beginning of the year that I think Swerve was going to hold gold in 2020, Mm -hmm. Isaiah Swerve Scott wins the Cruiserweight Championship at TakeOver 31. Now, this is this was the match that I had outlined as basically my flip match because if we have the same picks and we tie and get it right, oh, come on. I could get my share of the title back. Oh, come on. Um, but that's not what I'm going to do here. I'm the away team right now, and we're going for the W, and I'm going to pick Santos. Um, oh, damn, if this is the match, This is going to be the match, and I, I, I do think that uh, it could be match of the night potential. I, I'm really excited for the Balor and O'Reilly match as well, just to watch yeah. the match. I think I, I think uh, I like a slim card, five matches. It gives an opportunity for all five matches to stand out on their own. This was the match that I had highlighted as basically going to flip my pick based on, and I'm glad that you got to go first. Um, and I'm comfortable with the Santos pick because Swerve if I am correct, got got a tag team win recently. Yeah, he pinned Santos yeah. Escobar. I think he's saying he's the only one that has a pin yes. against him, and I think that was relatively recent. So, yeah, going off that thinking, I guess that kind of makes sense. But I'm not going to change my pick. I'm going with Isaiah Swerve Scott. Tucky's going with Santos Escobar, and that's probably what will decide this championship right here. But we're going to talk about the last two matches anyways. 
The first one I want to talk about is the North American Championship match between the North American champion Damian Priest, the Archer of Infamy. Again, he's taking on Johnny Gargano. Tucky? Yeah. Do we see a title change here? I do not. I see Priest retaining um, because I'm, in the purely personal, I'm starting to enjoy the reign of Damian Priest. I, I, he's coming into his own. Yeah. He's kind of a goof. I, I don't know why he's jumping into hot tubs fully clothed. <laughs> it's, a, it's a but flex. You, but you do you. Yeah. You do you. <laughs> We're not mad at you, Damian. Right. And um, to echo your sentiments where I don't, you, I think, Candice and Johnny are going to hold gold at the same time at some yeah. point. It's got to be soon, I, right? I don't think we're there quite yet. Um, so I'm going Damian Priest. That's fair. Uh, I also am going with Damian Priest. It's another match I actually had to put some thought into because, I mean, at least if you flip the title here and went to Gargano, you know what you're getting with him. Yeah. Damian Priest, we're still kind of working in that character, which, like you said, it's starting to come across good on the screen, but... I think he needs a big win, and why not get that win over Johnny Gargano, who is one of the most decorated NXT superstars of all time. Mm -hmm. But like I said earlier, I wouldn't be surprised if Gargano wins that soon. I think this is a feud that might continue. I don't know if you kind of have Priest win by in a in a sketchy way yeah. here. Yeah. Maybe not cheating, but like Johnny's caught Suspect. off guard. Yeah. Johnny has reason to to earn a rematch. Referee yes. spot or something like that. Yeah. I don't think this is the last we're gonna see. Of the two, and I don't think this is, you know, what we deserve. I think we need more between these two. Mm -hmm. So, that being said, I'm going to go with Damian Priest, which then takes us to the main event, the NXT champion Finn Balor taking on Kyle O'Reilly. Very surprised we are seeing Kyle O'Reilly in the main event of a takeover, but I would say it's well-deserved. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because not only do, do I think we're going to get a good main event match here between these two, it's also the ripple effect of what, what happens with the Undisputed Era pre- and post-match. And, yes. And O'Reilly standing within the Undisputed Era and kind of trying to figure out what NXT slash WWE has planned for the Undisputed Era as a whole. So, uh, you're up to pick first in the main event. I do think there's going to be something going on with the Undisputed Era here. Mm -hmm. Someone or maybe two people are going to cost Kyle. I don't know if that's Adam Cole or if that's Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong or whatnot, but I feel like Finn is going to get this win off a distraction of some sort with the Undisputed Era. Uh, Finn, it's too early, honestly, for him to even lose the strap. He got it just because of the fact that Karrion Cross had that injury, but I do believe that Finn did deserve another run with the title. Granted, this match... It could be a five star match. Like the, mm -hmm. the the technical wrestling with Kyle O'Reilly and the abilities of Finn Balor, it's just gonna create some magic. But I feel very confident that Finn Balor will still be NXT NXT champion by the end of the night. I also agree. I think Finn Balor is going to win. Um and, and my case for that is like, you know, Finn probably didn't draw it up to earn the title in this way, but if if they take it off of him right away and put it on O'Reilly, what relevance does he have? You, and, you, you know? and you couldn't go to Cross O'Reilly. Like, yeah. if Cross is close to coming back, which I believe his injury wasn't too bad, Yeah, I don't think Cross O'Reilly sells. And that's nothing against Kyle O'Reilly, because I think he could be a single star at yeah, one point. But sure. it's Finn Balor, you know? It's got to be. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Our NXT TakeOver 31 predictions. We differ on one match. The Cruiserweight Championship will decide the fate of my NXT Championship. If I lose this title, that would be three straight pay-per-views that I've lost the title. Well, I hope <laughs> that is what happens. I hope that's what comes to fruition. Um, we will be watching uh, with bated breath as Swerve and Santos. <laughs> that's the only one that we're going to care about when it comes each to other the competition. Because yeah. whether we get the picks right or wrong, that's going to be the one that changes hands. But uh, at least we know going into it, that uh, the, the more people you have in the predictions, the more ties can pop up and come yeah. out of it from different scenarios. Um, at least we know that there will be a definitive winner. And the card's smaller than the other shows that we do in AEW on the main roster. Absolutely. So the, the margin for error on these shows, mm -hmm. very slim. Yes. And how many shows that happen... Not many. Yeah. So the next time that maybe I could get this back would be a couple months down the road. So yes. I'm hoping 
that my boy Isaiah Swerve Scott can prove me right from the podcast months ago win the Cruiserweight Championship. But yeah, down below in the comment section, let us know who you got at NXT TakeOver 31. And also make sure you follow the show on Twitter at Pot on the Mark. That's where you can see all the links to our podcast and all the links to these YouTube videos that we do on the Overtime Sports Network. Tucky, any final remarks? Uh, just make sure you follow us on Twitter at Pot on the Mark and, and the Overtime Sports Network on Twitter at underscore OTSN. We have a new website. Click the link in the bio on the tweet. Watch Kyle as he handles the belt for one last time. Uh, I'm not confident. I know you said that when I walked <laughs> in. Yes, the body language from Gagliardo right now is, is not great. Uh, I'm just excited to have my title back. And life is good. Life is good. So yeah, tune in next week. We'll hopefully have a podcast out for you guys then. That's all we got for you this time. Enjoy NXT TakeOver 31. See ya!